Madam President, exactly three weeks ago, the Social Security Administration made a very quiet announcement. Next year, for just the third time since 1975, seniors who receive Social Security won't be getting an annual cost of living increase. Now, two-thirds of seniors depend on Social Security for the majority of their income. For 15 million Americans, Social Security is all that stands between them and poverty. But not one of these Americans, not one, will see an extra dime next year. And millions of other Americans whose benefits are pegged to Social Security, millions who receive veterans' benefits, disability benefits, and other monthly payments, won't see an extra dime either. Tough times, but not for everyone. According to the most recent data from the Economic Policy Institute, CEOs at the top 350 American companies received, on average, a 3.9% pay increase last year. You know, that's a lot of money because the average CEO pay at one of the top 350 American companies was a cool $16.3 million in 2014. And on average, they got more than half a million dollars each in pay raises. So, CEOs get huge pay raises, while seniors, veterans, and others who've worked hard, 70 million of them, will get nothing. Why? It's not an accident. It's the result of deliberate policies set right here in Congress. Now, Social Security is supposed to be indexed to inflation so that when prices go up, benefits will go up too. But Congress's formula looks at the spending patterns of only about a quarter of the country. And the formula isn't geared to what older Americans actually spend. Projections for costs of core goods and services, projections that remove the components of prices that are the most uncertain and erratic, show that inflation is up about 2%. But seniors, who usually get a boost on January 1st, won't see an extra dime next year mostly because of falling gasoline prices, which just don't mean as much to millions of seniors who don't commute to work. Meanwhile, seniors who are trying to cover things like rent and exploding prescription drug prices are just left out in the cold, and it's all federal policy. And what about those huge CEO bonuses? They are also the consequence, in part, of congressional policy. A report released just last week from the Center for Effective Government and the Institute for Policy Studies details how taxpayers subsidize CEOs' huge pay packages through billions of dollars in giveaways, including subsidies like special tax-deferred compensation accounts and a crazy loophole that allows corporations to write off obscene bonuses as a business expense. Now, Companies can make their own decisions on how much to compensate their executives, but because of the laws Congress has passed, American taxpayers are forced to subsidize these multi-million dollar pay packages. It is time for Congress to make different choices. If we do nothing, on January 1st, more than 70 million seniors, veterans, and other Americans won't get an extra dime. And while Congress sits on its hands and pretends that there's nothing we can do for seniors or vets, while Congress claims that there just isn't any money to fix the problem, American taxpayers will keep right on subsidizing billions of dollars worth of bonuses for highly paid CEOs. It is a choice. Congress can spend taxpayer money subsidizing billions of dollars of bonuses for corporate executives, or Congress can use that very same money to help 70 million people who live on Social Security, veterans' benefits, and disability payments. Congress makes the choice. And that's why I'm here today, along with a number of my colleagues, to introduce the Senior and Veterans Emergency Benefits Act. The SAVE Benefits Act will give seniors on Social Security, veterans, those with disabilities, and others, a one-time payment equivalent to an average increase of 3.9%, the same tax-subsidized pay increase that top CEOs received last year. Now, we can pay uh, the increase for seniors and vets 
without adding a single penny to the deficit simply by closing one of the many tax loopholes that subsidize these giant pay packages for executives. In fact, according to the chief actuary of the Social Security Administration, closing this loophole will create enough revenue to help seniors and vets and still have enough money left over to help extend the life of the Social Security Trust Fund. You know, this should be a bipartisan effort. Nobody wants to see seniors struggle to pay their grocery and utility bills. Everybody should want to extend the life of Social Security. And both Democrats and Republicans have expressed contempt for this tax loophole. Back in 1993, Congress passed Section 162M, a tax code provision designed to rein in excessive corporate compensation. But the provision includes so many loopholes, most corporations just get around it. In 2006, in fact, Republican Senator Chuck Grassley said, quote, sophisticated folks are working with Swiss watch-like devices to game this Swiss cheese-like rule. In 2009, Republican Senator John McCain and Democratic Senator Carl Levin introduced a bill to shut down access to this loophole for corporate stock options. And just last year, the Republican chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee included reform of this loophole as part of his flagship tax reform bill. So let's just do it. Let's close the loophole and let's use the money to give seniors and vets the support they need. Think about what this change would mean. That 3.9% is worth about $581 a year, a little less than $50 a month. Now I know, that's just rounding error for those top corporate executives who are pulling in an average of over $16 million each. But Social Security payments average only about $1,250 a month, and millions of seniors who rely on those checks are barely scraping by. A $581 increase could cover almost three months of groceries for seniors, or a year's worth of out-of-pocket costs on critical prescription drugs for Medicare beneficiaries. That $50 a month is worth a heck of a lot to the 70 million Americans who would have just a little more in their pockets as a result of this bill. In fact, according to an analysis from the Economic Policy Institute, that little boost could lift more than a million people out of poverty. Now, we all know someone who lives on Social Security, every single one of us. We know family members, a friend, a neighbor, people who worked hard all their lives and who now rely on Social Security checks to get by. Giving seniors a little help with their Social Security and stitching up these corporate tax write-offs isn't just about economics. It is about our values. For too long, we have listened to a handful of powerful folks who've had just one message. Cut taxes for those at the top, cut rules and regulations that keep businesses honest, and let everybody else fight over the scraps. We've tried that approach, and now we have a retirement crisis. Guaranteed pensions are gone. 401ks and IRAs have been decimated by the stock market, and fewer and fewer people can afford to save for the future. We tried it, and it was a complete failure. These same powerful folks will tell you there's nothing we can do to help 70 million seniors, veterans, Americans with disabilities, and others who won't see an extra dime this year. They'll say, we can't afford it. They'll say, we can't do anything to expand Social Security. They'll say, we need to gut Social Security in order to save it. They'll say all of this exactly at the same moment that we continue to shovel billions of dollars in taxpayer subsidies out the door for corporations to boost pay to their highest paid executives. And that's the problem. The money is there. Only right now, it goes to a handful of CEOs because that's where the laws written by Congress sends it. But Congress can make a different choice, a choice 
that reflects our deepest values, a choice to give a boost to 70 million Americans who have earned one, a choice to lift over one million people out of poverty, a choice to extend the life of Social Security. It's all about choices. Millionaire and billionaire CEOs or retirees, vets, and disabled Americans. I ask my colleagues to support the Save Benefits Act. January 1st will be here soon, and we need to make a choice now.